Hey guys, so we're going to get an exclusive tour of the Automobile Driving Museum showroom. Um, a lot of beautiful stuff here. I'm with Paul from the Automobile Driving Museum. He's going to give us all the information on these beautiful cars. Um, without further ado, let's get into it. So we'll start with this green car behind me. Okay, the green car, if you've heard of a BSA motorcycle. BSA motorcycle, I, I can't say I have. And you haven't either? Okay. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> they were made in Australia. And for five years, BSA made automobiles. Mm -hmm. And this is a 1910 BSA automobile. 1910. Is it chain driven? No, it's gasoline driven. Gasoline. It has a four speed transmission. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the this is the parking brake. And this is the this is the shifter. First, second, third, fourth. The shifter's on the right. Mm -hmm. You can see it's right hand drive because it is Australian. Yep. And aside from having to clean up the chrome a little bit, this is exactly how we got the car donated to us. Wow. So original paint? My guess it's been restored. Yeah, the, the paint does look pretty fresh. Yeah, and so, so, and so is the upholstery. The upholstery does not look 110 yeah, years old. Yeah, <laughs> You're absolutely right. Even the wood. Well, maybe the wood is. I'm not sure. Um, right. I've seen these switches on the steering wheels of a lot of these pre-war cars. What, what is that for exactly? Okay, in this car, and I have to specify this car because the next two we're going to walk over is going to be a little bit different. Mm -hmm. But for the majority of the pre-war cars, the car on the left the, the lever on the left is the spark advance, mm -hmm. and the lever on the right is the throttle, which means controls how fast the car idles. Gotcha. And this is the spark advance that ignites the spark to the ignition. Mm -hmm. Okay. Gotcha. The bottom line is what you have to remember is that everything all the cars do went automatically today. Back then, they had to do by hand. Yep. Yep. This was a very mechanical car. Absolutely. So. I was watching the, the Goodwood Festival of Speed, or the, and I was watching specifically the pre-war cars, a lot of the old race cars, some of the old Fiats and stuff like that. And you're just watch, I'm just watching these guys and they're just flooring it, hauling, they're doing all this stuff, they're switching gears, they're, they're going crazy, and some of the cars even have like the, uh, the chain going right next to them. And I'm like, wow, those are so cool. Right. Wouldn't want to stick your hand out, but. <laughs> so we'll get this. Okay, uh, first let me say that this car and the car in the rear end are the only two exceptions to the actual rule, rule of the room in that uh, this room was created to, to, to depict the 1930s Packard showroom. Mm -hmm. So except for this one and the car in the rear end, all the other cars in here are actually 1930s except, or, or in the 1930s. Yep. Yeah. And that's kind of the Art Deco period, yeah, Great Gatsby style. There's a couple of pictures of actual showrooms. You'll see what we tried to recreate. Have you been to the um, the Nethercut Museum? I believe it is. I have not. I, th I think they have a very similar style showroom, or maybe it's the one in Oxard, the Mullen Museum. One of those two. They have a a, a showroom design very similar to this to, to represent a, a 30s showroom. It's, it's the Nethercut. The Nethercut. Because they have a couple of rooms. They have a um, they have a music room, and yep. then, and they have a cosmetic yep. room. Yep. Anyway, this one is a 1932 Plymouth. Uh, this is a very, very unique car. Uh, first of all, this is called the style of this car is called a town car. Mm -hmm. It means that there's a, there's a separation between the driver and the passenger partition yeah, where the passenger, or in most cases, and in this case, the chauffeur and the passenger. Mm -hmm. And what makes this really, really unique is that the passenger that was chauffeured around was Eleanor Roosevelt. Oh, wow. And so that's quite, this is a very historical car then. It is. The Roosevelts used this car in their summer home in Warm Springs, Georgia. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that makes it incredibly unique is that Plymouth never made a town car. Eleanor had it made into one because she had a reputation for being a very, very rich, snobby Democrat. Mm -hmm. And she thought if the public knew that she rode around in a Plymouth, they would think that, that she's playing Jane folk and they vote for her husband. Mm -hmm. But what the public does not know is that the town car body was done by a company called Brewster. I don't want to shoot down on that. 
and Brewster manufactured Rolls Royces. Mm -hmm. So it cost Eleanor more money to convert this little four-cylinder Plymouth into a town car than buy a brand new 32 Rolls. Wow. And, so and what are these lights up here for? The lights up there for? These are the same kind of lights that you would actually see in porch lights in homes. Mm -hmm. uh, they're, they're kerosene filled. So they're just, they're just like decoration, but, but like I said, you can't fill them with kerosene and, and use them as lights. But Eleanor would conduct her private meetings back here, so she had complete privacy when the chauffeur drove her around. But she, if she did need to talk to the chauffeur, she would just go. <laughs> and then the, sh the chauffeur had a little handheld microphone and he would say, yes, madam, what can I do for you? Wow, a handheld microphone. Yeah. In 32. In 32. So this was top of the line, like the top technology of the day, I imagine. People have a, th have a thing where um, they think the 30s is a stone age. It really isn't. Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have a lot, there's a lot more going on in the 30s that, that we have today than people think there is. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, this thing has always caught my attention. A Packard 8. It's beautiful, beautiful. Oh, it's like the, it, it really doesn't get much more pretty. It's got is, the suicide doors. Is it the, co is it the color that gets you? Or it's is it the actual about the car? It's the shape specifically. Okay, the suicide doors in the driver's door, that was a 30s thing. Mm -hmm. well, there were several other cars that we have in 1930s where, they, where the driver's door is suicide. Uh, the Pierce Arrow out on the silver black one out there has the suicide doors. Uh -huh. And that Lincoln has suicide doors. Uh, so like I said, it, it's a 30s thing. Yep. Now, you said, I said specifically, uh, for most cars, it's the throttle and the, uh, and, and, the, and, the, and the spark. Yep. That's because in this one's a little bit different. This car does not have a spark advance mm -hmm. because Pack was way, way ahead at the time. Yep. This is still the throttle, but the, one, but the knob on the left is actually the headlights. That's how you turn the lights on and off. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So they turn on. The battery should be disconnected. Yeah, they're, yeah, it's disconnected. They're not. If they go on, that's <laughs> So I, I've seen these these grills. Do these grills open up? The grills open up, and I have a funny story about this. The grills open up like a thermostat, mm -hmm. where the engine gets to be a certain temperature, and it actually will open up automatically, let, let the engine breathe. Oh wow. Yeah. Interesting. So is there like a thermometer, like some sort of gauge in there that kind of gauges mm -hmm. that, and then opens up? Exactly. Up exactly. exactly. But in, in 2017, when I ordered my car, uh, the car that I had back then, I wanted it complete, completely loaded. And I sat down with a salesman and, I, and he explained all the different options and packages and it came to one called the iLoop. I said, what's that? He said, oh, it's really neat. He said, it's active, the active grill shutters. The grill shutters open them automatically. I said, how much is it? And it seems like an extra thousand dollars. I said, I drive um, 20s and 30s cars to do it for free. Yeah. Yeah, that's... <laughs> yeah, well, that's the time we live in. Right. But yeah, let's just get a, a little walk around of this sure. thing. This thing is so beautiful. The hood ornament. Packard, you had a choice of hood ornaments because you're going to see two different ones. This one is the Goddess of Speed. Goddess of Speed. Yeah. And this package is a 1936. 36, right before the war. It's a roadster. Roadster. Coupe as well, we see. I'm sorry? Uh, coupe as well? Okay. No, the definition of a roadster is a two-seater convertible or a convertible gotcha. or a convertible with no back seat. Gotcha. What yeah. this has in the back of it is a trunk, it is a rumble seat. Yep. The car has no trunk. And this is the rumble seat right here, so that that's fold up. Yes, it opens up backwards. And look, there's even a, a footstep right here to get into the right. rumble seat. Every time you see a car with a rumble seat, you can see two steps on the right. Uh-huh. The one on the top and one on the bottom. And the way you get in it is you go left foot, right foot, hold on, hop in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's cars on the other side that actually have rumble seats open. Gotcha. And then this folds down so you can put luggage on top of it? Yes, right? the next two cars have trunks on them and you can see that that folds down, the trunk sits on top of it. Gotcha. All right, we'll uh, move on to this. This is a 1936 Lincoln Town Car. 
the the body was done by Brun B R U N N, um, and it's a V12. And you probably think, oh wow, V12. This thing is fast. It weighs five thousand pounds. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> and it probably produced like what hundred horsepower from the V12. If a I, little bit more, I think it's like one hundred and five, one hundred. Yeah, one hundred and five, one hundred and ten horsepower from the V12. The actual horsepower on the car is, oh wow, uh, we, we were both wrong. We were, we were, 150. We're, 150. Oh wow, we were wrong. 150. We were, we were, so it is actually somewhat powerful. Yeah, it is powerful, yes. But like I said, it weighs a lot. It weighs like 5,000 pounds. Yeah. So, no speed demon, but it'll, it'll get the job done. And, and look how spacious the back seat is. It's like a living room back there. Uh, look at that wood frame, wood furnishings as well. Yeah. That wood is beautiful. Very nice. Yeah. And then, so that's a footrest I see down that's there. That's a footrest and, and uh, these are jump seats. And jump seats as well, so you can have meetings back here and whatnot. I'm sorry? So you can have meetings back here and stuff like that. No, you know what jump seats are, right? Uh, you, no, you, what are they exactly? You don't know? Jump seats are, made, are true extra seats that takes it from a five passenger to a seven passenger. Mm -hmm. So the person sits back here and it's like it's two extra seats. Gotcha. Yeah. Very neat. Yeah. And then so is there, is and there- this is a partition window that goes up and down. Oh, yep. That's how they can talk. I'm sorry, you had a question? So is there like a top that goes on top of this? There is a top, there's a convertible top that folds up and gets stored in here. Mm -hmm. This drops down and then you can just drape it across. Okay, cool. So you could either have top on or top off. Gotcha. Depending on the weather. Wow, so pre-war Lincoln. These look yeah. like the original tires, or at least pretty old tires. They're pretty, pretty old tires. Pretty old tires. This is also 1936. 36 as well. And then this is a pretty neat feature. It has leather straps to hold up the, the rear view mirror for the driver. So something, something has to hold it up. Yeah, something has to hold it up. <laughs> it's, not the, it's not the spare. It did have a mirror here, but it got broken off. Gotcha. Oh, okay. I, I see where that would go, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we had a dose that was driving through West Hollywood and he kind of misjudged the, 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 the length of the car and uh -huh. side swipe, <laughs> side swipe something else and bye bye mirror. There you <laughs> go. Now let's get a shot of this front as well. And the Lincoln's hood ornament is a Greyhound. The Greyhound. Mm -hmm. Another very beautiful Packard. Did you, did you see any of the cars on the right side of the museum? Yeah, yeah, we, we walked by. I saw that, uh, that Packard there. That's actually a Pierce Arrow. Or a Pierce Arrow, sorry. Yeah. Pierce Arrow. Okay, did you see the maroon and brown Packard with the tan leather? Is that see? the, it's the four, it kind of looks like this. It's four exactly. and it has the. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, we saw that one. Okay, we bought that one as a twin to this one. Mm -hmm. Because this one only gets driven to car shows. Mm -hmm. And we bought that one as a twin for the public, so the public could see what it's like to sit and ride in a V12 Packard. Gotcha. Very interesting. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to ride in that oh. at some point in time. So It just floats. Yeah, <laughs> I can only imagine just <laughs> like being on air. Right. But this is a 100-point car. This is absolutely perfect. 100 points. So that is the, the like the concours. If you took it to a car show, it, they wouldn't agree. They wouldn't take off any points at all. It win, wins hands down. Okay. So, in other words, this is a perfect car. Yes. Perfect. Yeah. So yeah, let's. And I, I love the the gray interior. Super, super classy. The yeah. wood looks phenomenal on it. Okay. Okay. I want to focus something on the gray interior. The car itself is not white. It's pearl gray. Pearl gray. Yeah. But between the LED lights in the room and, and the gray interior, it makes it look white. But it actually is pearl gray. Mm -hmm. So it's the sunlight that the gray. Mm -hmm. Shows up a little more. Imagine. Exactly. Yeah. No, the white shows up more. Or the white shows up more. Yeah. Gotcha. Right. And I'm going to show you my favorite feature on the car, which is a little compact mirror, <laughs> but it's done in the same leather as the yep. seats. Wow. 
That's very cool. Wow. Yeah, yeah this thing is beautiful. Isn't that gorgeous? This is something straight out of Great Gatsby. And then so, the same thing. So the partition shows. comes up. Exactly. So the partition comes up. Mm -hmm. Wow, this thing is just phenomenal. Yeah. Absolutely. I'm speechless, guys. And these are the pictures of actual uh, showroom, Packard showroom, so you can see what we tried to recreate with the marble floor and the chandeliers and the spiral staircase and the iron gate. Yep. So that's what we tried, tried to recreate with this room. And then here's the, here's the matching trunk for the car as well. That's been fitted on the, on the back rack. Yeah, it's a so. matching trunk that actually has retrofitted luggage in it. So retrofitted luggage, what, well, what does that entail well, exactly? Okay, don't shoot the sign that says please don't open the trunk <laughs> because I'm going to open the trunk. Okay. And I hope nobody sees this on YouTube that yells at me like, why don't you open the trunk? But I'm going to take a chance to show you. Yeah, I appreciate it. We appreciate it. Of this course. is very cool. Because I, I love showing you. So retrofitted luggage, it just all, fits, all period, correct. It, it fits absolutely perfect. Yep, it, mm -hmm. it sure does. And it has the little key locks on all of it to keep mm -hmm. it safe. Right. And uh, this is the original documentation, I assume, for it? Mm-hmm. Wow. I don't know about original because the car's been restored a couple times. Gotcha. Yeah. But the documentation, nonetheless. Right. Wow. Yeah. Watch your hand, I don't want to. Yep. So, I mean, uh, roughly, Ballpark, what, what do you think a hundred point, oh, here, let me, there we go. What do you think a, a hundred point Packard would, would go for? You mean, what, you mean if we had to sell this today? Yeah, if you had to sell this today, just Between pack. a half a million and a million. Wow. If I had half a million to a million to spend on a car, this would be in the running. Mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. Yep. Thank you. All right. We have another very cool car here. This is a 1939 Cadillac limo. Limo, yeah. I, I, I see the space in the back. Okay. And so, let me... Yeah, let let's me. take a look at the, the, the back of it, too. Okay, oh, you have to come on the other side of me because the door opens that way. Just look how spacious it is in there. Going there. Again, it's like a living room. Does this have the, the jump seats in it as well? It does. So it has the jump seats. It has it's the jump seats. It has the foot rest. The foot rest in there. Yeah. And even the ceiling is, is pretty tall. Well, let's take a look at, yeah, like I could probably crouch in there. This, this is six one. The way we got this car was the person donated to us. He had attempted to have it completely restored, uh -huh. but the, the, the restored box stood up so bad. Mm -hmm. uh, he, he would do things like he would connect the, the, the windshield wiper no, but he didn't connect the motor to it, so mm -hmm. that it was completely useless. Wow. And things were held together with rubber bands, and just it, it was. A, so he he walked up, came to us, and said, "I throw up my hands. I never want to look at another restorer again." Mm -hmm. He says, "I'll make a deal with you. you. You can have the car, but you have to promise me you will get it restored and restored right." So we did. Wow, that's a good deal. Yeah. Good deal. Mate. And it's a 1939 Cadillac. Mm -hmm. Um, it's got the split window up front, I see. It's the split window up front. This is the, the exact, not the exact car, but the, the exact make, model, and color that was used in the Godfather movie, if you're we're, if we're familiar with the movie. Yep. Well, the one, this is the one that gets thrown in the back of. Oh, wow. Yeah. Didn't, um, hmm? what's, the, what's the famous mobster? Al Capone. Didn't Al Capone have a, a Cadillac limousine like this? Or did he have something I'm else? I'm not sure. I, would, I wouldn't put it past him, but I'm not sure. Gotcha. I, I don't want to I, I think Al Capone had a bulletproof Cadillac limousine very similar to this he one. He probably did. Yeah. The hood ornament is also the hood release. Huh. <laughs> 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 that is cool. <laughs> and it has the little glass. Yeah. Uh, piece in it as well. That's that's a very elegant. And yeah. I, I like the the grill. I like how the grill not only is vertical but also horizontal. Mm -hmm. So yeah, we'll get some. Uh, that. Yeah. And the last car is 
It's a 105 year old Packard. It's a 1916. 1916. Packard. 105 years old. This is called a twin six, which is a fancy name for a V12. Mm -hmm. So it's two six cylinder engines side by side with one common crank. So they're so instead of being aligned, they're they're side by side, kind of uh -huh. like a W, like exactly. a, a W12, I guess you can call exactly. it. Exactly. So are these wood? Are these wood rims? They're, I believe they're wood and they're painted. Painted wood rims. Yeah. It's got don't hefty. Quote, don't quote me on it, but I believe that's what they are. Yeah. Looks about right. It's got big leaf springs down mm -hmm. there. I can see. The hood ornament on this is called a motor minder. Mm -hmm. And if you're looking at the driver's per, the driver's vision, it actually shows you the level of the water temperature. Oh wow! Oh yeah, I see the little ther thermometer in there. Yeah. It's got all this, this leather. And Did it come like this originally? Um, the side curtains, I believe, are new. Side curtains are new. Yeah, they were never on before. Gotcha. So it's done a burgundy two-tone black and burgundy and the rims even match that was that was a common color back then burgundy was very yeah. common in, in in the in the 20s and 20s and 30s mm -hmm. so do these older cars have drum brakes because this was before disc brakes right they're mechanical mechanical gotcha mechanical brakes and we have a uh, very art deco uh, not yeah. so art deco but something you'd find in a 30s showroom to kind yes. of match the and then that, that that's yeah. a 30s baby stroller This is a beautiful, beautiful area. And then this one, you know, should go out the window, that's the library. The library? It's a reference library. It goes all the way. Gotcha. Yeah. So, those are the cars. Good deal. And then we have two spares in the back here. We have the original plate, B86868, New York, 1917. Yeah, the cars, I don't know how the original was, because the cars are 1916. Uh-huh. So it could have been registered later, but... Gotcha. Yeah. All right, guys, so that wraps up the Automobile Driving Museum. Um, big, sorry, we have a little kid honking a horn over there. Probably shouldn't be doing that. Um, but yeah, so Paul, such a great guy. He gave us a, an exclusive tour of the showroom they have for the pre-war vehicles. Um, absolutely beautiful stuff here. It's 610 Lairport Street in El Segundo. So if you guys want to come check it out, ask for Paul or one of the other guys who works here. Um, absolutely beautiful. Again, big thanks to, to Paul for, for showing it. Um, so guys, like, kid again. Guys, like, subscribe. Um, I'm trying to get monetized. I need to get a thousand subs. So let's get there. We're at 28 right now. So we've, we've come a little bit. When we first started, I think we had three. So we're at 28 now. So I appreciate you 28 that have subscribed, but we still got a long way to go. Um, we're gonna keep cranking out these videos for you guys. So yeah, just uh, we appreciate your support. And uh, yeah, thank you.